Hey, welcome back. This is Mitch from Pencil Kings and I help artists create income streams. Today, I want to talk all about creative experiments and um, the place that they have in what you're doing and because I think it's a great place and it fits in very nicely with what I'm trying to do right now with these videos is it's totally an experiment to see what's going to happen. All right, so let's dive into this. So where is the place for creative experiments? Where do they fit in your workflow? Because generally you're working on your skills, trying to improve, get better, 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 better. Um, and so you're constantly striving towards this higher level. But what I'm talking about is more of like a, a, a lateral move back and forth to explore and find new territory where interesting and cool things can happen. You could be doing research and development. You could be trying new techniques. You could be trying new tools. Uh, I remember speaking with uh, Sykra, one of the very first instructors that we had on Pencil Kings, and he had taken like a year to do style exploration. And I just thought that was so cool. And it's something that I also did when I was working back in visual effects. And we would be, you know, you'd finish one movie and then you're waiting to get onto the next project. And in between the two of that, you're trying out new tools and techniques. And that's really, I, I think like such a, an, an amazing space and place to be. So I wanna talk a little bit about how you can um, use that in your own art practice to develop and push your own skills. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this exploration and experimentation time. Um, for me, it, it's like there's, you know, you could look at it strictly like I was talking about before for style, looking at other artists styles, trying to incorporate them into your own and create your own unique style based on kind of like Frankensteining things together. You could look at refining your own style. Um, you could also look at workflow specifically and look at ways that you could try speeding up your workflow because if you're able to create twice the amount of art in half the time, um, that's a huge improvement and you're just going to improve uh, far faster by doing it that way. So in this experimentation phase, basically what you do is just you let go of all the expectations that you may normally have for yourself. You know, trying to finish things on a certain deadline or trying to hit a certain quality bar or just putting expectations on yourself of what you think you can or can't do. Just letting all that go so that you can show up and then having some kind of an intention for what you do, what you want to do with your own experiments. And the type of experiments that you do don't have to just stop with your artwork. You could also use them in ways uh, like, let's say on social media, you could be trying different ways of posting and seeing what the engagement you get on those things. If you're doing outreach, you could try different messages, like initial messages that you send to people and see how they're responding to it. But all this, you kind of have this uh, scientist mind. And this is what I love about the the journey of an artist, because there's obviously there's the skill part of, of things, you know, like what you what you create on the page or on the, on the screen. But then there's all the other skills involved around that. And this mad scientist skill, I think there's so much room for us to grow and so many amazing things that we can discover just by kind of putting that skill hat on the side for a little bit and then just diving deep and allowing for there to be space to really get into your experiments. So, so far we've talked about style, workflow, outreach or community. And I want to talk about one more type of experiment where you basically it's not necessarily exactly doing the opposite of what you would normally do, but something like that, where you go and deep dive into something that you normally wouldn't be that interested in. So let's say that you've never been interested in animation, but you decide to do some experiments and understand the tools and techniques or, or methodologies or processes that animation uses. So you can bring them back to your regular type of work and see what you can learn by, by going into that. And again, just letting there be some space for experimentation. So I don't know if this is a new idea for you as something that you've tried or not before but if it isn't and you have no time for doing experiments what i would strongly advise that you do is carve aside some time at least just like once a month it could be one day a month you book it on the calendar and that's your experimentation day where you allow yourself to just put whatever you normally do to the side and, and try some new stuff try try to grow and let go of any kind of expectation that you have and just be in the moment or go into that experimentation day with an with an intention of something that you're trying to learn or something that you're trying to find out or a new way of doing thing or doing things or trying to have some kind of a breakthrough that's another great way that you can use that experimentation time 
All right, that's it for me. I'm going to sign off now. But when you do your experiment, I would love to hear or if you've done one recently, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Or if you plan to do something, I'd love to know what you plan to experiment with and how you're going to implement that. All right, I'll see you next time.